Gina Carano was the face of women's MMA at a time when women weren't even part of the UFC. Her career is the reason fans started taking interest in female fights, and that was due to her style of fighting which led to exciting battles, as well as her good looks and charismatic personality which translated perfectly to her career in acting afterwards. A career that tends to overshadow her accomplishments in MMA nowadays. So how good was Gina Carano actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today we're going to talk about Gina Carano. Gina's career is the reason why many women got into fighting, and although she didn't popularize MMA like Ronda Rousey did, she was the first to bring it some momentum and that's what I want to highlight in this video. But before we get to that, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. These members get early access to my YouTube videos as well as content that's only on my Patreon. And of course I get a shout out before every video because I'm very thankful for their continued support. So if you want to become an undisputed member on my Patreon, the link will be down below. The audio for this video is also available on the Keon Kamara podcast. And it's also a podcast where I do next day recaps to fight events. So please subscribe, it's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts podcasts and soundcloud and if you leave a five star review on apple podcasts i'd greatly appreciate it now let's get to it prior to beginning mma gina was a pro muay thai fighter who built a record of 12 wins one loss and one draw she became the first American woman to win a Muay Thai fighting title in Thailand. She not only showcased her high level striking where she threw combos at ease, but she also showed her toughness as she pressed forward in these fights and wasn't afraid to take hits. These qualities were perfect for when she transitioned into MMA at the age of 24. She did that on June 10th, 2006 when she fought Leticia Pestova at a World Extreme Fighting event. An event that was held in Las Vegas which made this fight the first ever female sanctioned MMA bout in Nevada. Carano came out immediately as the aggressor with punches and kicks that forced Pestova to shoot for a takedown. But Gina defended that attempt with ease and eventually found herself mounted on top of Leticia. She threw big elbows before finishing off Pistova with a barrage of punches. The fight lasted 38 seconds, and it was the only one in her career that took place at bantamweight. Three months later, she fought Rosie Sexton at a catchweight of 138 pounds. Sexton was a more experienced fighter with an undefeated record of 5-0 going into the fight. But Gina was much bigger and immediately threw a leg kick that dropped Rosie. And this was followed with a kick to Sexton's body. Rosie's only hope was to shoot for a takedown, but Carano defended that with ease due to her size and the knee to the body. From this point on, it was all Gina who was throwing a bunch of combos that were left unanswered by Sexton. It was only the opening minute and it was already looking like a beatdown. Credit to Rosie for pressing forward and attempting to impose some sort of offense in this fight. But on one of the takedown attempts, Gina got a hold of her back and looked close to securing the rear naked choke. Unfortunately, Rosie shaked her off and ended up on top where she finished the round with ground and pound. It was no longer a one-sided fight. And at the beginning of the second, Sexton closed the distance early by clinching immediately. But Gina used her size to get out and create distance. This led to a bunch of punches that were left unanswered by Rosie. And the same thing happened again. Sexton attempted to clinch or take down the fight. But Carano denied these attacks and continued outclassing Rosie on the feet. All the takedowns in this fight were denied. And after Sexton's final takedown attempt before the end of round 2, Gina connected with a big right hand that knocked her out cold. Two months later, she made her strike force and featherweight debut against Elena Maxwell. Another thing to note was that the fight was contested at 3 2 minute rounds. Which basically made this a 1 round fight. Not only was Elena similar in size to Carano, but she was throwing a bunch of kicks and punches early on due to her background in kickboxing. Gina responded with combos of her own which quickly made this a competitive battle on the feet. Although Carano was pressing forward more early, Elena managed to catch her with counter shots. And near the end of the first round, she secured a takedown. But Gina managed to reverse the position and remain on top until the bell rang. After a few kicks from each woman to start round 2, Maxwell took down Carano again but was immediately reversed. Carano threw some ground and pound before Elena got back up. The two swung toe to toe before the end of the round. In the beginning of the third, Gina connected with a big right hand before clinching up and securing the takedown. But while off her back, Maxwell secured a triangle choke that led to a reversal. She was immediately mounted on top of Carano whose arms were also trapped. Elena began throwing punches and the fight looked like it was about to be stopped. But somehow Gina escaped and immediately mounted Maxwell. She threw down vicious ground and pound until the end of the fight. Regardless of it being only 6 minutes, it was a really fun match. And Gina's performance was enough to win by unanimous decision. After this win, Carano made her Elite XC debut against Julie Kedzie at 140 pounds, which was the promotion's featherweight division. This marked the first female fight to be televised on the Showtime network, and it was contested at three three-minute rounds. The two were feeling each other out on the feet early with Gina connecting with some nice kicks. Julie attempted to bring the fight into the clinch, but Carano's size was too much as it helped her separate and connect with punches. Kedzie attempted to take the fight down, but all were denied, and at one point, Gina found herself on top landing ground and pound. But once the fight got back up, Carano began to pick apart Julie on the feet. It was combo after combo before the bell rang. The same thing happened in the beginning of round 2. Gina was pressing forward and was the aggressor in the stand-up. But then she ended up on top after a failed takedown attempt by Kedzie. 
The thing was that while on the ground, Karana wasn't doing much so she opted to stand back up. And it was a good idea as she began connecting with kicks to the head and body of Julie as well as some nice punches. Kezi attempted another takedown but it was no use as Gina was able to bully her way back up. Credit to Julie for surviving this onslaught. She even ate a big right hand that dropped her but she popped back up immediately and secured her first takedown of the fight before the end of the round. And that short burst of momentum continued early in the third when Kezi secured a takedown. She almost got a hold of a choke before Karano slipped out and stood back up. The fight ended with the two swinging back and forth. It was a very good fight that saw Gina win by unanimous decision. In September of 2007, Karano fought Tanya Evinger. She weighed in at 141 pounds. Gina opened up the fight with kicks before being taken down. Tanya almost got a hold of a guillotine choke but lost it and ended up on her back. Karano was landing some ground and pound before securing the rear naked choke before the end of the round, making this her first and only win by submission. She returned in May of 2008 to fight Caitlin Young. It was at a catch weight of 144 pounds after Gina missed the 140 pound weight limit, but she was the aggressor on the feet early before tripping Caitlyn to the mat. And although the two got back up immediately, it was still Karano's fight as she continued to connect with her striking, until Caitlyn secured a takedown of her own. But once again the two got back up and began trading until the end of the round with Gina winning the final exchange. In round 2, Caitlyn began to find her rhythm on the feet and was finally connecting with some combos. But Karano retaliated with strikes of her own. The fight was quickly becoming a war, until the momentum shifted towards Gina who connected with a punch to Caitlyn's nose. She realized that her opponent was hurt and began pressing forward with heavy punches, and Caitlyn was eating all of these shots without going down, until Karano landed a front kick that sent her to the floor. She got a hold of Caitlyn's back and sunk in the rear naked choke, but unfortunately she was saved by the bell. As both women went back to their corners, the doctors checked up on a cut under Caitlyn's eye and decided to stop the fight because of it. Going into her next fight against Kelly Kobold, Gina faced controversy on whether she was going to make weight, and after missing it initially, she finally made 141 pounds on her third attempt. Karano began the fight by connecting with the right hand, but Kelly immediately closed the distance by clinching with her. She tried hard to take the fight to the ground but Gina was able to defend it and separate. From there she pressed forward and showcased good head movement before connecting with punches and knees. Kobold clinched up with Karano again hoping to secure at least one takedown before the end of the round. But she was unsuccessful. Early in round 2, Gina connected with the right hand before throwing a flurry of punches that forced Kelly to clinch up. At this point Karano was against the cage and eating some punches. But the takedown was still ineffective against her. They separated and Gina continued to pick apart Kobold on the feet. Until Kelly finally took her down and threw some ground and pound. But the round ended before any significant damage could be made. For the first half in round 3, Kelly was using all her energy to secure the takedown. Even when the refs separated the two, Kobold continued pressing forward. But in the process, she ate so many punches and knees. And while in the clinch, Karano locked up a rear naked choke when Kelly attempted a takedown. Kobold slipped out and the two stood back up until the end of the fight where Gina connected with a bunch of nice kicks. Her performance was more than enough to win the fight by unanimous decision. So at this point, Karano was huge in the world of MMA. And that in itself was a wild statement to make as women weren't even fighting in the UFC. But finally with the help of Gina's star power both inside and outside of the cage, women's MMA was finally getting some recognition. And that recognition grew even more in her next fight against Chris Cyborg, the 7-1 Brazilian Muay Thai fighter. Similar to Karano, Cyborg was one of the bigger female fighters in women's MMA. And even though she had one defeat, she was on a 7 fight win streak. The fight went down in August of 2009. It was held by Strikeforce after they purchased the lead XC and all their assets, which included Gina and Cyborg. They believed in this fight so much that they placed it as the main event, which was a first for women's MMA, which meant the fight was contested for 5 5 minute rounds, a first for both. From the start, Cyborg was the aggressor on the feet and Karana was getting picked apart unlike any of her previous fights. Cyborg attempted to suplex Gina to the mat but ended up on her back instead. But Cyborg also had excellent grappling skills and she showcased that by locking up a heel hook. Karano managed to get out only to get her back taken by Cyborg who threw down some ground and pound. But the two got back up and the same sequence happened again. Cyborg was picking apart Gina on the feet before attempting a suplex that had her on her back. But this time Karano mounted her and began throwing ground and pound. She was in a dominant position but for some reason decided to stand back up. And that was a bad decision as Gina had no answer for Cyborg striking. And to make matters worse, Karano looked like she was fading. She was in survival mode with 2 minutes left in the round. Cyborg secured another takedown and was close to locking in the Americana. But Gina continued to show hard and escaped. In the final 15 seconds of the round, Cyborg was on top throwing heavy ground and pound. Karano was no longer defending and with one second left before the bell, the ref stepped in and stopped the fight. This marked Gina's first and only defeat, as it was also the last fight in her MMA career. She never officially retired which created anticipation for her potential return. She was scheduled to fight in June of 2011 but pulled out due to a concussion that was sustained during training with Julie Kedzie. 
There were also talks of her coming back in December of 2014 to fight Ronda Rousey. But that too never materialized due to the UFC being impatient with Gina going at her pace on making a comeback. As of now, it has been over 10 years since she last fought and with all the success she found in acting, I don't see her returning to fighting anytime soon. So after going 7-1 in MMA, how good was Gina Carano actually? So the biggest thing to point out in Gina's MMA career was that all her fights were exciting. And I get that she's only had 8 pro fights, but I can genuinely say they were all enjoyable to watch. And most of that was because of Carano. She was one of the more elite strikers in women's MMA early on. Her combinations of punches, knees, and kicks were too much for most of her opponents. She didn't have that consistent one-punch knockout power, but her volume made up for it and was the reason why her fights could last long and still be very entertaining. She wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her opponents and trade shots because she knew she was better. Even if she did get hit, she continued to press forward. I mean, she allowed Cyborg to stand back up even though she mounted her. That's how much she wanted the fight to be on the feet. And as much as decisions like those weren't the smartest, they were respected by many because most casual fans enjoy a battle of striking than grappling. And that's what Carano did the best. She appealed to many MMA viewers due to her fighting style, personality, and looks. Which is the reason why she became the face of women's MMA early on. And that star power was growing quickly. Had she won her fight against Cyborg, I could have seen her reach Ronda Rousey levels of stardom. In fact, if she fought Ronda, I think she would have won. These are all what ifs that could have made Gina an even bigger star in MMA. But after her loss to Cyborg, she got a call to play the lead in the 2011 film film, Haywire. And from there, she caught the acting bug and slowly began to commit to that career. A decision that I personally think was smart as I'm always in support for fighters making money without taking damage. And with roles in Fast and the Furious, Deadpool and The Mandalorian, Carano really found success after fighting, which is something many former fighters can't say. I would give Gina's MMA career an 8 out of 10. I do think her size helped her in a lot of her wins. But if you thought there was a lack of female featherweight fighters today, they were almost non-existent when Carano was around. But the biggest thing to take away from Gina's career was her impact on the sport. No, she didn't popularize women's MMA, but she was the first to let everyone know that women were able to put on exciting fights just like the men. And because of this initial breakthrough, not only were more women beginning to enter the sport, but now they had more confidence to join MMA gyms unlike before. Even Ronda Rousey credits Carano as a reason for becoming an MMA fighter. So if there was no Gina, there would be no Ronda, which would have altered the entire history of women's MMA. And that to me is what makes Gina Carano a certified legend. My name is Keon and this is my take on how good Gina Carano actually was. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you on my next one.